Hunter x Hunter episode 119. Who appears looking very adult, looking to destroy Yuppie. Speaking of rage. He's been hinting at this. Wow, he looks really cool. <laughs> the Dragon Ball creator definitely stole the Super Saiyan thing from Hunter x Hunter from the future. Hunter x Hunter was sort of the, the anime singularity from which all things stem. That's the one silver lining of having that horrible, incestuous dart character. Strong X or X weak. I can't- I'm reading into this, but I cannot help but feel like Yupi is just a target for Kalua's wrath about what happened with Gon. Yupi just wrong place, wrong time. It's also kind of funny watching myself in these recent episodes. Like, I can't even really hate Yupi anymore. I mean, I know, you know, Chimera Ant, Royal Guard, terrible, all that. <laughs> but like, in a certain way of thinking about it, he's just a dude trying to do his job. And everyone's just making it really difficult for him. He was just like an uneventful work day, but no. He's got to deal with invisible enemies and electricity kids and <laughs> all this random stuff. It's out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, he was good at double team before. Now he's had electrified double team. Wow, this actually feels like real Yuppie pain. Kalua just became sort of OP. Godspeed, that is a nice name for that. And it stuns him. This is a really annoying fight to have. Speed plus paralysis. Making it look so easy. I mean, I'm confused about these back images. What are these onis? These look like Thunderbolt Gods of Legend or something. This is such a crazy extension of Kalua's powers. Finally, it feels like this is turning a corner where now he, he's like a Nen user, if that makes sense. We've seen all these other characters, these Nen professionals who have been out in the world for a long time. They sort of have their thing. It's well established, like Moral and his smoke, Knuckle and his APR. Kalua's had a lot of different tools individually at his disposal and is very talented. This feels like he's picked a character class. He's allocated his skill points very clearly. Speaking of not getting left behind as a secondary character like Krillin or whatever compared to Gon, Gon's John Kempo is suddenly looking very cute. It feels very timely for Kalua given the, the relevant character development that's happened this arc. Sort of becoming his own man. I can sort of see limitations to this stuff. Of a royal guard, no less. Kalua, despite being a kid, has a lot more experience. This is Yubi's first day of fighting. These look so cool. All these frames. But if the past is any indication, he'll just he'll figure it out. Oh, I can do this? This is possible? Their growth is part of what makes them so dangerous. The narrative dropping cliffhangers mid-episode. Okay, there's a limitation. There we go. Yuppie is still dangerous in every situation. He's the king of area attacks, it seems. We gotta see this elevator in use. We gotta see someone die in this elevator. For all the, the elevator lore we got. Why don't you just punch one in randomly three times? Oh, it gives no warning either. Oh, it does give a warning. That's benevolent of them. Oh, you can't leave! That was a death sentence. This is not benevolent. Until you take Bravada's form. I wonder if that increases the weight. This is probably not the arc that Bravada wanted for himself. Stuck in an elevator. Yeah, I feel like all, all roads sort of lead to taking on Bravada's corpse. Yeah, I forgot he has guns. He also has guns. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like a natural fit to start up murdering someone. Nice. I mean, you don't have to kill him. You could just let him die. He's gonna end up saving Bravada, isn't he? Oh, he's so cute. Oh yeah, he also has guns. Does this not activate gas? 
Wow, all that elevator lore for what? Koga <laughs> really going through it. There's so many decisions to make for everyone at such rapid speed. Mistakes are just almost inevitable. There's, there's the gas, a little bit late. I can fill the whole car, that time, Ikago gassed a relative. And there's one behind him. Well, do you want the gas? Oh. Played his hand. Oh, he said that out loud? What's the way out? I mean, you could go up through the elevator. You just blast your way up. You MacGyver it. Or you can get drunk. Did he actually come up with a plan? For the materials in the closet, Ravada refusing to let his Ark be trapped in the closet, which was a real risk. Where the hell is Palm? I can't put my finger on it, but there's something so Metal Gear Solid about this whole thing. The complex, the compound, the tanks, the gas. Right, he the shot Do not trap himself? It's like Escape the Room, Mikago edition. Could be a gamut. The tank also could be empty. Oh, he's in there. And blast him with your tank! Finally, someone's gonna hit with getting hit with a car. Should have done that with the truck in the first place. I just want to see Bro get hit by a truck so bad. <laughs> it's not happening. We just blocked the elevator, maybe. It was a gambit. Now, can this Kago escape the elevator? Right, right. That's what I was thinking. I wish I could just blast my own openings to things with my claws. Now it's time to get drunk. <laughs> Is there, no, there are no problem we can solve with blasting? Can you not blast your way through the elevator? That's the tube. If it's not the poison smoke, it's the gas. This is an epic mental battle between two aquatic creatures trying to escape the room. Also, did Akako just call himself an octopus? Is that character growth? This is brutal. I would be just absolutely panicking. Make it take his body, right? And you could blast your way up. You can tell he's asleep by the X on his eyes. It's gonna just murder him at point blank range? Damn, just animal execution. This is the hardest part. Can you do it? I don't think you can do it. I don't think you have it in you. I'm not convinced. He's not gonna do it. Speaking of answering to yourself. Kulu wouldn't necessarily want you to do this though. Oh, that was clever. Is he vomiting? He's vomit crying. It's coming out of every orifice. Nah, bro. Not at all. It's a lot of emotions to handle. <laughs> There's a lot going on. It would have been a little bit too dark for a Kongo to just point blank old yeller shoot him in the head. I mean, they're also probably related twice. Like, they're both Chimera and children, and they're both from the same ocean. Like, they were neighbors before all this happened. I think in keeping with a lot of the show, you want to see a Kongo win and succeed without breaking his principles. It comes back to the same thing with Knuckle, about answering to yourself. There are certain ways you don't want to win. There are certain ways in which victory is failure. There are conditions for victory, just like Dan. It's amazing that so many characters in this arc are so soft-hearted. Like, all of them. Except for Gon, <laughs> the protagonist. Gon would have just shot him at point blank range if he was triggered enough. Something, something, hypocrite, and then blast. There's this long running question in this arc of who the monsters are. The heroes took a massive blow to that image thing with Kimugi's injury that really shifted the scales. Ikago could never conceptualize this in this moment, but like actually this action, this decision pushes the scales towards a win. Like it's sort of meaningless if we're coming in to destroy the ants because they're a threat to humanity and then we're the ones that are inhumane. Not that the king was 
you know, a super humane guy leading up to this. He was like, oh no, my Kamugi, while simultaneously engineering the calling or whatever it is they call it. But generally, I think it's intuitively obvious watching things that you don't score a heroic victory by becoming your villains. I also know from experience that there are moments where you get really fixated on a, on a point of victory or success or something you really desire. The trap there being you think that the victory itself of, over some circumstantial material thing will feed into your identity in a way that you need. Achieving that success, you know, checking some box while ignoring or pushing down something you feel is, is wrong, like this is not quite right. The effect of that is the, the feeling of victory fades very quickly if you even have it at all. Sometimes it's so immediately obvious that you've gone wrong that there isn't even a taste of victory. But either way, inevitably, you settle into this long state of remembering the terrible things that you've done. And that ends up becoming the, the fruit of your decision. It's a lot harder to stomach in real life because unlike the characters, we don't have an audience typically in these moments. There's no one to cheer us on for making the internally right decision. Though there are often people who will cheer us on for what they perceive as the success. So it has to be almost entirely internally guided. It can be really unsatisfying. It's difficult to walk away from things when they're right in your hands like that. But long term, I think it's something you end up being really thankful for. Like, man, I was so close to making this huge mistake. What the hell even stopped me? The internal term I use for this a lot of the time is cleanliness. I like things that are clean, where you're not accumulating anything dark. You haven't willingly touched something dirty for your character, for your internal conception of self. Clean is often the best choice long term. I think it can be a really useful way of conceptualizing how to act in situations. It's like not what is the best outcome necessarily. Not that that's not important. Not what will other people think. Not what is the most beneficial for me. It's like, what is a way I can end this or resolve this where I feel like... I'm clean. I'm untouched by corruption. It's almost like a level of hygiene for your mental and emotional state. <laughs> Flashbacks to Chido just reading that book and laughing. The more I look at this thing, the more terrifying it becomes. Well, that's sort of what I thought at first, too. Oh, he's not... he's reacting now. Up to this point, he's always forced other people to react. He's not leading this... this Gungji game. Using his, his very strengths against him. A what already? Alright, I can give a little more credit to this ability now, this that ability, reading the emotional thing. Poof is somewhat assured of what Moral will do in this situation, and can be the one who adapts and controls, which up to now has been Moral's strength, sort of being the, the perfect counter to Moral. I'm trying to put my finger on exactly what is happening with Moral. It's, it's really interesting and feels like it's very deliberately set up, from his introduction and that speech he made, to living up to what he said, very clearly and deliberately, to this, which I feel like is somewhat his undoing and maybe the unraveling of, of that as a strength, or hitting against the limitations of it. Or actually, it could be confirmation and give credence to his philosophy, because part of his thing is not really relying on what the enemy is doing, doing your own thing, never being in reaction, never trying to second guess, never doubting, but acting to the best of your ability despite the unknown. Which, I guess, he's sort of failing to do here. He's kind of caught on his back foot. I think maybe in that sense, it's a final test for him. And what victory would mean is shaking himself out of this. A big question sort of being answered about what would you do when you're up against that level of power? You know, would you be able to maintain and uphold the words you said to Kalua when you're in the situation? If he does pull through this, if he's able to act through it, figure it out, not be stalled by whatever this is, put his own plan in place, despite his doubts and concerns, that might end up serving as the culmination of his own thing, the challenge he set out for others. And there would be something really satisfying about that. One thing I like about Moral's outlook is that you don't know the outcome of things typically. There's so much randomness we don't account for. I mean, there's almost unfathomable levels of randomness to our actions or to outcome, which can be really self-defeating. I mean, you know, for every obvious story we hear, for if one thing had gone differently, you never would have been born or this would have never happened or, or whatever. For example, one that's famous in my family is that one of my paternal ancestors was a soldier in the Civil War. And the night before a big battle, there was a heavy rainstorm, which made a lot of the weapons unfireable. And so the battle didn't happen. So it's sort of like, if it hadn't rained that night, would any of us be here? And actually, if you really dive into it, the answer is no anyway, because without getting overly explicit, like a delay in anyone's life by a second changes things like conception. You can drive yourself absolutely insane with this. And to finish my sentence, for all the things like that that you understand, there are about a billion or more that you can't. That is just life, you know, that is the major composition of life. Not that it's random necessarily, just that we can't really trace things, so it appears random. Which I think can be a defeating point, like is all my life just cause and effect and circumstance. And one way I've heard a phrase that I like is, you really can't control anything, but simultaneously you influence everything. I mean, like every choice you make has such a huge impact on everything that follows. 
you'll never understand and never see. It ends up being like the most significant thing. It's worse than insignificance. I think people don't realize this. Like, people think the biggest pain of life is insignificance. My choices don't matter. No, it's way worse. Your choices matter so much. If you really understand that, it would crush you. You would have it much easier if your life was insignificant and your choices meant nothing. They mean everything. This is a bit of a departure from moral and his combat strategy, but what I do like in it is something that taps into a larger question of Hunter x Hunter, which is what game are you playing? And moral's like, you know, I don't really know. I don't really understand everything. There are things that are out of my control. It's possible to be defeated. I'm not going to be defeated by myself. This is a rare situation where he sort of is defeating himself. He's wrapped up in rock, sister, paper style thinking. And therefore, I guess my final thought about it is for it to be satisfying, he would have to live up to that ideal through the Royal Guard.